Before we get started, I wanted to introduce uh, Noma's Stroll Coordinator um, and Inwood's very own, Martin Collins, who, um, as usual, has a very special statement to share with us tonight. Martin, you're up. Thank you, Nuria. Thank you, and good evening, everybody. Welcome for to our open studio this evening, and thank you, everyone, for joining us tonight in this latest of our series of Thursdays at 7.30, Call Stay Home Open Studios. Uh, for the past two decades, tonight's sponsor, Inwood Pharmacy at 4915 Broadway, between West 204th and 207th Street, has served Upper Manhattan, striving to improve our quality of health and well-being by providing the most comforting, reliable service. They have a free delivery and are open weekdays from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. and on Saturday from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Most insurance accepted, free consultations on medicines and free blood pressure screenings for anyone who needs them. And you can certainly check out their website, which Michelle Orsi Gordon had posted just a moment ago. Their website is inwoodpharmacy.com. And our thanks to Inwood Pharmacy, getting the job done for the past 20 years uptown for proudly sponsoring tonight's Stay Home Open Studio by Liz Ritter. Nerea? Thank you, Martin, and thanks to the Inwood Pharmacy. Um, hello, everyone, uh, and thank you for being here tonight for our ninth virtual open studio. Yes, it is our ninth evening together. Um, my name is Neria Leva Gutierrez, and I am Acting Executive Director of the Northern Manhattan Arts Alliance, and I have the great privilege of introducing our weekly artists. Um, and as I said at the top, um, with great pride, we are in our ninth week, and it feels like a milestone. Um, and I know I've said this before, but I will say it again, these weekly gatherings are life-giving. Um, it's inspirational, it's grounding, it's wonderful to coalesce around the arts every Thursday nights um, as we do at 7.30. And I know I've also said this before, but it bears repeating, each week it's new. It's exciting and it provokes all kinds of reflection um, and thinking. And for me, I feel sustained um, during our week away from one another. And that of course is a testament um, to all of our wonderful, innovative, creative beings who come here weekly to share with us their processes, their insights, their work, and we are forever grateful to them. Um, and as long as we're giving thanks, I wanted to thank a number of entities who are supporting this program. The New York City Department of Cultural Affairs in partnership with the City Council, the New York City Department of Small Business Services, Inwood Merchants Association, Uptown Collective, and Height Sites. Thank you for supporting us, uh, for supporting our community, and for helping us do what we love to do, especially now. Um, and it gives me now special pleasure to introduce tonight's artist collector, uh, who is known to so many of you, and for good reason, um, and who has been with us each and every week for the nine weeks that we've been doing this, supporting every single artist and every single open studio. Indeed, her support for artists and for Noma is pure and deep, and we are so happy and so grateful that she is here with us tonight. We are all in for a big treat. Elizabeth Loris Ritter. Liz Ritter is a new Inwood resident, having lived for 37 years prior uh, in Washington Heights. To say that she is a supporter of the arts is, of course, an understatement. Liz is the chair of Community Board's 12 Parks and Cultural Affairs Committee, and she has always been and remains a powerful voice for arts funding and programming in Northern Manhattan. Her longstanding efforts with the New York City Department of Cultural Affairs, one of tonight's sponsors, has rightfully put Northern Manhattan on the map. And it was her tireless work and advocacy to the Upper Manhattan Empowerment Zone who are here tonight um, and who remain important supporters, and thank you, um, that helped yield the funding that created NOMA. And for that, we are extra grateful. Her ties to NOMA indeed run deep. She is the founding president of the Hudson Heights Owners Coalition, the original fiscal sponsor of the Uptown Arts Throw, which we are bringing to you live and virtually tonight, uh, which she helped co-found with our very own Martin Collins, Mike Fiddleson, Ziad Ramadan, and the late Homer Young Kennedy. 
And it was during this very first Uptown Art Stroll when Liz brought her first piece of art, Becoming the Collector, we will learn about tonight. In fact, there's hardly an Uptown Arts Initiative organization in which Liz hasn't been involved in some meaningful way, either as a contributor, a participant, a donor, a booster, or behind the scenes matchmaker as she self-describes. She currently serves on the board of Up Theater Company. Uh, she has used art for political statements, including pop-up theater in the subway and a rainbow installation on the GWB following the suicide of Tyler Clemente. She's a two-time Caribbean volunteers expedition volunteer to Jamaica, where she has recorded Jewish cemeteries and two of her photographs from her series entitled Rest in Pieces, Fragments from Jewish Cemeteries in Jamaica, appeared in 2013 in the Women in the Heights exhibition, uh, and others have been shown in New York City and Kingston. She also appeared in Noma's Women in the Heights exhibition in 2019. Liz is a published writer of essays and poetry, a teacher of improv, a preacher of sermons, an avid crocheter, and a singer in choirs. And despite all of these extraordinary talents, according to Liz, her greatest creative endeavors are her 30-year and counting marriage to Barry and her two fabulous adult children, Tina and David, who she describes as competent, moral, and civically engaged adults who are gainfully employed in their respective fields of study. We are thrilled to present tonight's artist and collector, Liz Ritter. Liz, it's all yours. You're on the other side tonight. Okay, it's a little weird being on the other side. Um, I'm so stoked to be able to do this. Um, I was gonna say I'm not really an artist, but I'm a little bit of a photographer and have um, uh, had some work in Noma Women's History Month uh, collections. But as I've built a collection of art that I've uh, purchased at art strolls at uh, Noma Women's History Month events at other local shows, uh, at shows curated by Aaron Sims and Inwood Artworks, by Kat Goochbro and um, Lilia Rogavaya at Michaela, by at uh, Hebrew Tabernacle at the gallery curated by Regina Gray Guess. Uh, I have added to a pretty considerable collection of local artists, and I thought that. Um, the art stroll would be a nice opportunity to invite people into my home and show them that being a collector isn't this rarefied thing. You don't have to be, you don't have to have the wealth of a Thiessen Bornemitha or of a Mrs. Jack. Uh, you can be just a regular person buying the art of your neighbors. Um, so... Yeah, I'm not sure. And people may have questions about them. I want to actually just get to the art so people can see some of the stuff that I've had an opportunity to collect. I, I will say that the thing that all of the pieces have in common, it's a very eclectic collection. What they all have in common is I like them and they move me in some way. And I think that um, the purpose of art is to disturb the comfortable and to comfort the disturbed. And uh, I think the pieces that I have do that in equal measure. Welcome to my apartment. So as you can see, I have a lot of art. Um, I started collecting actually at an art stroll, but I'll get to that in a moment. Uh, this is gonna be not in order that I purchased it, but in order that you see it, this is a painting, George Washington Bridge in Winter, by a guy named Bennett Vadnais, who was in residence at my friend's apartment, and he just painted what he saw. This is a wonderful scene by Tony Serio um, of the row houses on Riverside Drive. Kind of reminds me of uh, what if Hopper wasn't depressed? I just love the way he plays with light. Um, we've got a couple of watercolors by Lauren Zarombo. She did, I, I don't think I actually bought this piece at an art stroll. Uh, she was a neighbor and she did a couple of shows and she had pretty much moved by the time the art stroll happened. Oh, you're getting a peek of the book nook. Uh, this is the other piece by Lauren. It's called 
a perfect blue jay and it's a it's a big dead bird and it's a it's a really striking piece that kind of takes over the room but I want to read to you what it says on the bottom it says perfect blue jay found dead October 10th 2002 when Congress gives Bush the second unchallenged control of US forces for imperial corporate overthrow of Iraq destined to punish the fate of the USA for Republican gain, Lawrence Rombo. And I just find that piece to be a striking statement on life and death and war and what's really important. Uh, next to it, this is not an astral piece. This is a piece that was in my grandparents' home um, for you know, my entire life. And I've always loved it. And this piece also is a watercolor by a friend of theirs named Lionel Reese, and I'm including them in this show and talking about them a little bit just by way of highlighting um, how important art was in my household growing up. Lionel Reese was a friend of my grandparents, and during the Depression, they were school teachers and they still had salaries, and so part of what they did was they bought their friends' arts. One of the things that I find I'm able to do a little bit of uh, in these times. So over here we've got wonderful uh, miniatures by Natasha Beshenkovsky. She is an artist who has been doing miniatures for many many years. She's got uh, she does these incredible panoramas but she also does these lovely lovely small paintings, little still lives. I really enjoy the sense of, uh, it's kind of like the, like Rembrandt in a uh, little study in food. And this delightful piece by Fago, uh, Felipe Galindo, George Washington crossing the Hudson. And uh, there he is standing up in a car. And I just think that's delightful. I love, I love his sense of whimsy and his sense of passion. This piece here, America. It's called uh, Who Are the Stars? And it says, America, what comes to mind? You said freedom first. What else? You said justice and equality. You said red, white, and blue. I am confused. Where are the stars? Who are the stars? I think it's important to note that this is a pre-9-11 piece. So I think patriotism was just very much on uh, Ahuva Mantel's mind. Uh, her husband used to was at the time a district leader, very politically involved, and this um, this piece comes from a conversation she was having with him on the phone. She was she was making a painting of an American flag, and she asked him what comes to mind, and that's what she wrote in the painting. So over here we have an incredible piece by Rachel Liebman. She does, she works with holy texts. So I'm gonna really zoom in on this so that you can see that the, this is collage and decoupage. But if you look at the backgrounds, it's all different languages. It's Hebrew, it's Thai, there's Cyrillic, there's Latin. She took pieces of holy texts and put them together into a single uh, collaged piece. I love how it looks like strands of hair or strands of rope or something that can be woven together to make a narrative. And then to my left, I've got Ayo Janine Jackson's stunning piece, which because of the way this area is lit, you can't really see how marvelous it is, but she's taken is part of a series and she took several photographs of people in history and photoshopped herself in and here she is with frederick Douglass. and the title of this piece is conceptualizing what it means to be black ordinarily i wouldn't have a poster in in an art show but this is a poster of the first coogan salsa blues and shamrocks 5k run featuring the artwork of uh, sammy garcia who's 
mural uh, hung in a in pride of place in uh, in Coogan's, which sadly closed last month. So Dave and Peter and Tess gifted this uh, original poster to me, and I figured I would share it with you. Now this this is an important piece coming up. This is Stephen Beveridge's. It's our pleasure to serve you, which I think is a delightfully cheeky name. You can see the classic Greek key coffee cup and the spilling beverage onto the fabric below in this mixed media piece. Uh, this is the first piece that I bought. I bought it at the first art stroll in 1999. There was a party for anybody who bought art at the art stroll and I wanted to go to the party. So I was like, well, guess I better buy myself some art. And uh, that is sort of how my collection began. So this is a photograph taken by Cheryl Faust. Uh, it's in the Gowanus in Brooklyn. And you can see this pile of trash. It's a wonderful optical illusion. This isn't a pile of trash that has on top of it a Mickey D's M that's been discarded. It's a huge pile of trash. And because of where she's positioned, the McDonald's is below grade a block away so you can see this mcdonald's being overtaken by garbage and if that's not a metaphor i don't really know what is this piece is a cute little photograph showing the lively scene on 181st street it's by sharice and frederick it's called closures and i bought it at um an art stroll month event that was happening through Inwood Artworks, the wonderful Aaron Sims. Now over here, I love this piece. It's by Kat Gooch-Bro. She puts together along with uh, Lilia Rogovaya um, an art show at La Kayla. It rotates, or it used to, every couple, three months. And she's also um, moved out in her, uh, in her work and explored painting. And I just am delighted by the wonderful colors in this piece. This is a color print of a watercolor done by a woman named uh, Siren Theta, and she had an open studio in the art store last year. And now we're coming into my den. We've got, uh, that is a photograph that I took. It's um, in, Jamaica of some discarded remnants and a, as you see a large shell in a tombs in a cemetery in Jamaica where I used to do restorative work in Jewish cemeteries. This is another photograph of mine um, that the, the David and this piece were both in Normal Women's History Month um, exhibitions. You see what what I love about this piece is uh, I like the picture taken on a couple of days before the election in 2016 at the uh, Clinton headquarters in uh, Durham, North Carolina. But a couple of years later, I had the opportunity to meet Mrs. Clinton and to take a picture of her holding the picture. So for Women's History Month, uh, NOMA event, I put these two together as a single piece. And then we have another poster. This one is an art stroll poster. It's hard to see it because of the money, but this is from the 2017 stroll during which um, I and Maggie Hernandez were both honored. And I will show you that because later I'll show you a piece of Maggie's. So this is a stunning piece by Allison Loeb says these were grams two rings two buttons from decades when ivory was everywhere when smiling men posed beside mountains of tusks bound here with thread twine glue and regret now elephants evolve tuskless changing because we don't and you see that she's embroidered an elephant and festooned it with the beads and shells made from its former trunk such a poignant piece Say hello to Elmo. And then we've got this piece just for today by uh, Maggie Hernandez. I, I was fortunate enough to win um, a lottery that, uh, that Noma had. It was a fundraiser and the winner got a piece of art by uh, Maggie Hernandez. And I'm 
This is a piece by uh, Rama Martinez Sanchez. It says, Faith. I bought it at that 2017 art stroll um, at the United Palace when Rosa Parsteck put together a, uh, an art showing, uh, an exhibition of works that were for sale. These pieces, oh yes, we have this piece here. So this is my latest acquisition. It's by my neighbor. He's three years old. His name is Noah. And uh, every day during the seven o'clock cheer, we would look across Henshaw Street at each other. And he would, he was just so active and so delightful. And he liked the fact that I had an Elmo in my window. So I bought him an Elmo shirt and he gave me that little drawing as a thank you. Last couple of pieces here. This is a piece by Janet McDowell. It's, uh, she would do digital art based on scripture and this was a piece that she did as a cover for our synagogue magazine and she purposefully used ten turbaned uh, men to represent the minion because she figured the religious quorum of ten men because she really thought that it was important as a post 9-11 piece to remember that uh, we need to think of those against whom we may be fighting as people as well and that we all are one. And this piece is a collage done by Michael Albert. It was an award for me um, from Up Theater and he made this collage out of, P of the New York City skyline out of pieces of Up Theater programs over the years. And then last but not least, we have Rosa Naparstek's wonderful, wonderful piece. I'm not sure what the title is, but she makes incredible art out of found objects. Uh, the other side of this piece is a mirror, so, uh, but it's hanging on the wall, so it's difficult to show you. Um, and that is, that is it. That's a piece of my art collection and a walk through the pieces that I have by local artists, most of them purchased at Art Strolls. Uh, I look forward to inviting you into my home for real, maybe having a little wine and cheese sometime, and uh, I'm happy to take your questions. Thanks so much. Thank you so much, um, Liz. You know, you, you, at the beginning, you said um, the art that you've collected, um, you know, is 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 are, are pieces that have, um, for some reason, uh, sort of settled into your heart, or um, you've just been drawn to them, and it shows. And 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 it's really um, lovely to see those works um, assembled with such care. Um, in your space, um, and they clearly have such uh, significance. And I really like your initial message about um, the arts and the accessibility, um, because I think sometimes, you know, we 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 go about our lives thinking that art is this sort of marginal activity. It belongs sort of, you know, on the side, and these sort of these people who do this, or or it's elite and and, and sort of inaccessible or unavailable um, to us. But in fact, it's not right. It's it's human expression and that's available to all of us. So um, it's it's really wonderful to be able to see your collection. And also nice to see emergent artists like Noah, um, who already has a great sense of color. Um, right. so, <laughs> so, so that's also nice too. So I appreciate you sort of, you know, patronizing the young ones too, which is great. Um, I'm sure there are lots of questions from our virtual audience. Um, and so we'd like to open the floor to questions uh, for Liz. Um, and like last, um, the last several weeks, we will draw questions from the chat room. So if you have a question, um, please ask in the chat. Um, and we will um, uh, address your questions. We'll unmute you and you can ask Liz directly. Um, and to help us do that tonight, um, we have returning Joanna Castro, NOMA's consultant for special projects, um, who will serve as our moderator. Joanna. Got to unmute. You. I should know better. I've done this a few times. I guess uh, greasing the wheels there. Anywho, 
Uh, it's a pleasure to see so many familiar faces, many of the artists that Liz um, showed their works, as well as um, several of the curators. So please, we'd love actually to hear from you and how it feels to see your work um, in someone's home, in a new home, um, as well as any other questions you might have. Um, if I may, as we are waiting to get questions in the chat, um, Liz, I'd love to ask you, um, how does it feel to see these people that, that you know watching you and, and, and seeing your home and, and seeing maybe for the first time your collection? And why is it meaningful to, for you to be part of, of tonight's program? It's very cool. Um, I because since I shot the video and I knew what was happening next, um, I was scrolling through the feed of pictures so that I could watch the people about whose art I was talking uh, so that I could see their reactions to what I had to say about their piece. So that was really fun. Um, it's also, you know, it's this weird metaphor that we're, looking at each other in a gallery and so many of you whose thumbnail photographs are on my screen are represented on my wall. So, you know, there's this interesting little distillation of all of you here on my computer and I have you all very much with me as I walk around through my apartment, more so now that I've actually hung everything up now that I've moved. Um, but, yeah. Does it feel like you've gone full circle from being one of the founders of the stroll, buying art, being an honoree, and now being part of the stroll? It does. It does. I mean, I've thought about um, being part of the open studio stroll for a while, and it took me a bit to kind of get it together to propose it as, a, as an articulated idea. And of course, here we are doing stuff virtually. But it took a while before I realized that I had this large of a collection. I mean, it wasn't until I really started to take stock of how many pieces that I had that I realized that I have uh, 30 odd pieces by 25, 26 artists. There are people whose art is not included in the video. There are a couple of, of uh, photographs of my husband's um, he's, he's on the call. We've got uh, photographs of his that have been in Art Stroll and other events, um, and also some of his older work that we have um, hanging. I've got, um, a, my son reminded me, a classic work that my children made for me. Um, it's, a, it's a platter, you know how when you're, a, when you're a small child and you do like a baby's footprint? When they were teenagers, as a Mother's Day gift, they did a handprint and a footprint um, of their, you know, practically adult selves and included their weight and their height in inches, which of course was substantial because they're like 5'8 and 6'2. Um, so, you know, there's a sense of whimsy and humor and art um, that surrounds all of us and that informs what we do and how we move through the world, whether or not we think of ourselves as artists. I think everybody's an artist. Amen. So our first question from the chat is from Jane Robinski. Jane. Oh, my, my question is, um, how long did it take you to hang everything, Liz? Was it easy to decide what went where or, or was there a lot of uh, trial and error in moving it about? Well, for what's hanging here now, it took me about a day um, of actual hanging. But the reason why I was able to do that so quickly is I spent two months thinking about it. Um, <laughs> so it really depends on where the starting point is. Um, I also had the history of how stuff was hanging in my Castle Village apartment, which many of you had seen, and then how stuff was hanging in the interim apartment that I had when I left Castle Village before I moved here. 
And some things are hanging in relationship to each other in the same way. And I was wondering things, if you took pictures of your previous arrangements. I did. You did. I did. But what I find interesting is the way that the art talks to each other and the meaning that it takes on uh, does depend on what's around it. So sometimes, sometimes that's thematic, sometimes that's um, more related to color. Um, sometimes I will realize that pieces go together in an unexpected way that I realize only after I see them together and go, aha, these two things are talking to each other, like the photograph um, of um, conceptualizing what it is, what it means to be black, and the decoupage, uh, collage of the strands of hair or rope. And, and they, they kind of talk to each other in terms of um, her braided hair and yeah, if you can go back to that. So you've got, it does feel a little bit like hair, and then you've got mm. her hair. And I never put those two together in that, as being related in that way, yeah. until one of them was up and I had a space and I thought, oh, that picture should go next to that collage because they talk to each other. And then the, um, uh, the American flag is the next thing over. So having Ao's photograph thematically related to the flag, which is hanging over an actual, that little corner triangle of blue is an actual American flag, which is a, was a, an American flag presented to a deceased veteran, the family of deceased veteran. Um, at his funeral. So, you know, they're thematically related, but then you also have the way that the art talks to each other in an unexpected and unanticipated way. I also oh, realized, you. Mike Fiddleson, I have two of your photographs, but they're not hanging on my wall because it might be that a certain young man who lives in Connecticut has them in his home. Not naming any names. I was just afraid maybe you were in take it into your bathroom and they were in there somehow. Yeah. Say that again. I was just afraid maybe they're hanging in your bathroom and you didn't want to bring this in there. Ah, I do have art in my bathroom, but not by local artists. That's just the after party. Exactly. Uh, there are lots of really great, wonderful comments. Uh, one from Rosa. Dear Liz, this is a wonderful and generous sharing of your wonderful and generous collecting. And it was interesting for me to see artists' work that I did not know about. Thank you. Um, so lo lots of really great comments. That's one. As uh, so a follow up to the previous question from Jane, um, Nidia, would you like to? Um, yeah, I did. So um, when you, you know, I, I love this, this notion of, of the dialoguing, you know, um, between works or among works. Do you ever find um, that uh, you like to sort of, um, sort of shift the arrangement, sort of have new people talking to new people. How does that work? Do you live with them for a while and then make decisions to sort of reinstall or, or, or do you find that you sort of settle into it? How does that work for you over time, especially in, different, in a different space? Well, in Castle Village, I lived there for a long time and was acquiring art. Uh, I acquired uh, a bunch of pieces when my grandparents died. Um, and then as I bought more art, I would periodically uh, rearrange things. When I was living in the interim apartment, it took me about eight months to hang anything up at all, and it pretty much stayed there. This installation, already there are some things that I've realized, you know, the aspect ratio of this particular piece doesn't really work where it is. It should go someplace else, which means that you know, so it winds up being like a, a game of, uh, of Jenga. And then I have a whole bunch of, you know, family photographs that uh, 
I would like to display. And as Barry and I were walking around the apartment today, we realized a better place for them to go, which means the Coogan's poster has to move, which means, you know, I'm going to have to do a little bit of rearranging. So already it's a pretty dynamic thing. And then, you know, and then I wind up buying some more art. Um, so I, I don't plan on moving anytime soon, but I don't plan on stopping collecting. So that means I'm going to have to rearrange things if I buy anything that's particularly big. All right. Uh, now we actually I have, have a big uh, empty question. wall in my bathroom that I, I need to, there's something that I have to get fixed so that I can hang there. Um, it's a poster, but the frame is kind of not in very good shape, so it needs to be reframed. Uh, do you have a local framer you go to? Um, I go to a guy on the Upper West Side. He's, uh, he's super reliable and really top quality work, a little expensive, but totally worth it. Okay. Uh, we have a question from Mike. I think this was a piece that was not in the video. Mike, are you there? Hey, Liz. Hey. Long time fan, first time caller. <laughs> yeah, look, looking at the, the screen right now, there's some square or diamond shaped piece on the wall behind you, kind of over your right shoulder. Oh, yes. Um, hang on, I can turn on a light. Does that, can you see that a little better? Or is it worse with the light? So that is, that's a piece that I bought uh, a couple of years ago in Sfat, which is the mystical city in uh, Northern Israel. And I, <sighs> so it's, it's metal and it's crumpled and covered with um, canvas and then painted. I think the canvas is painted first and then applied to the metal, which is then crumpled into a shape. And this particular artist had uh, several pieces in that gallery. Um, it was a very weird time for me. I had gone uh, to visit uh, a friend for her son's bar mitzvah. And while I was in Israel, my nephew died of a heroin overdose. So I was, um, you know, alone in a strange country and had a lot of time to wander around. And I found myself in this mystical city that is extremely good for wandering and thinking. And there's a lot of art. So I spent three or four days aimlessly wandering and sort of consuming art and found myself in this gallery, fell in love with that piece really enjoyed uh, chatting with the gallery owner. And when I woke up the next day thinking about that piece, I thought, all right, you know, I guess I'm gonna have to buy it, but it was super expensive. And um, when I was talking, I went back to the gallery and said, look, you know, I don't, he said, you, you know, you should buy this piece. I'm like, yes, I should buy this piece, but I can't afford this piece. And I don't want to insult you or the artist, by you know handling over the price because I really can't afford it and I don't want to insult him by offering something that's substantially less and he said well you know we're not really selling at the moment so he got the artist on the phone and uh, the artist was willing to accept a price that was slightly higher than I originally had in mind but was reasonable and um, I bought the piece and it's it's very light it's large but it's very light and they shipped it and um that was a whole weird thing with customs uh, and it arrived in this crate that was large enough to hold three small children um but yeah so that's that piece it's very colorful and I like that it talks to the collage that Michael Albert did, which is equally colorful. Nice. Um, talking about um, storage and, and mailing, um, Jane had another question. Jane? 
Ah, I see. Uh, I was just wondering how, how much do you have that isn't displayed? <laughs> well, there are a number of pieces that I have that are displayed that aren't in the video. So right. that's a that's a good I don't know. But I know you said you keep pieces. collecting and um, um I still have I have a number of pieces. I don't have anything in storage. I, I have a number of pieces that are under my desk behind me that are smaller pieces, mostly photographs. I have, um, there's the junior collector who might be related to me and might also be on this call who is uh, sitting on some of my pieces as a loner um, while I was living, you know, in a temporarily in a space that wasn't large enough to accommodate them. And I might need those back at some point, but I'm not going to bug them too much about it. Um, so, you know, probably a dozen, 15 pieces, not, inclu and not including family photographs, of which I have, I don't know, how many family photographs does a person have? A lot? So. Okay, nice. Uh, Lilia curator at La Kele and artist for many, many Women of the Heights exhibits. I think you had a question. Yeah. Hi, Liz. Hi, everyone. My, my, yeah, you guys know me as Levin, but this is my real name and the computer is from work, so that's my real name. I mean, my maiden name. And uh, I just wanted to say that, first of all, I live in the same building that Liz lived for many, many years. And I've known her forever in various capacities, including we were both coordinators of the children's play space in our buildings when our kids were little and so on and so on. But I remember from going to the seventh floor a number of times that Liz's door, the door to her apartment was a work of art in itself and, and full of statements and of course kids work. And I'm wondering, with Liz having, you know, a private life and a public life and the apartment. I mean, I, I don't know if it really separated. I think Liz's apartment is a public space in a way too. Not that, you know, you know what I'm saying, I think. What's your door like in the new place? So there's actually a short snippet of my front door at the very beginning of this video. Oh, okay. and, it's, and it's super boring because this is, um, although Castle Village obviously is also a co-op, um, we were allowed to have things on our doors, just not stuff in the hallway. This once, this once they told us it was a fire hazard, all the, art, all the pieces of paper that I had on the door, but I guess. Well, I had magnets mostly on my door, so I guess that wasn't a fire hazard, who knows? Or maybe they changed the rules, but, in the co-op that I'm living in now, you can't have stuff on the door. You can't have, I can't even have a, a mat, you know, Aww. I made a speak, which okay. is a total bummer. So unfortunately, my door is as garden variety, vanilla boring as everybody else's doors. Okay, well, miss that door. Yeah. I just wanted to say, uh, we have a similar rule where I live. We can only have a seasonal decoration up for the duration of the season. Mm. So what I do is I have something up for every season, for fall, for spring, for summer, and for winter. And nice. they can't tell me no. <laughs> nice. I, I see in the chat somebody had a question about the, the framer. So at the risk of uh, giving a business plug, it's, it's Art Care Custom Framing on seven, the south side of 72nd Street between Broadway and West End. Is there a framer in our neighborhood even? There used to be a there framer. There used to be two framers in our neighborhood um, and they're now no longer here. Um, although there's a very good printer who used to be in our neighborhood and then he was somewhere else further south in the neighborhood and then he moved to Brooklyn and now he's back close-ish in the Bronx in the um, Andrew Friedman home, um, which is sort of an artist in residence place and he does printing out of there. So 
for the photographers out there if you ever need a good printer um, to just the best quality reproduction of, of your photos. If I can jump in for one second. We do have a printer and it's B&H uh, Framers. They are located at 5060 Broadway and West 215th Street. That's B&H Frames, 5060 Broadway and 215th Street. B&H Frames, that's good to know. And actually, Liz, your um, stroll poster is from, oh. is, it was framed by B&H. Oh, excellent. Well, dude, I'll go there tomorrow. The thing that I, that I want to have framed uh, to hang, yes, in my bathroom, is uh, an old poster from Bellevue Hospital's 250th anniversary. Um, Bellevue celebrated its 250th uh, back when I was working there and Barry was working there. That's where we met. Um, and it's this wonderful poster, and I have two of them, one that's framed and one that's on the back that has the historical information and timeline about Bellevue. So that's just sort of a fun piece of my professional history and it was, it's a pretty nice looking poster. So, you know, you don't wanna put art uh, like an oil or something that's a little bit more delicate in a bathroom because there's just too much humidity from showering. So, you know, you gotta be careful with your bathroom art for so many reasons. Okay, I believe we're gonna wrap up. Um, we'll continue the Q&A session online. Um, so Nidia, do you wanna take it away? Oh, mute. Um, yes, thank you. Um, those were great questions. Um, and, and really, again, so um, fascinating to hear um, about your history collecting and your deep connections um, to Upper Manhattan. Um, and so now, the fun part. Oh, yeah. Um, yay. We, got, we moved to our rapid fire questions. So you know how this works, Liz. You've been here every week. I'm going to put up some cue cards. I'm going to ask you some questions, and you're just going to, off the cuff, give an answer. You ready? Right. I'm going to move in so that I can read them. All right. Here we go. I'll read them out loud okay. anyway. All right, what is, and this is a be, this might be a difficult question for you. Um, what is your favorite place in New York City or Uptown? Uh, Jamel Terrace. It is just an incredible block. Those row houses get me every time. So beautiful. Um, that's definitely my favorite. That's my favorite street. Um, my favorite place, probably the Heather Garden in yeah. Tryon Park. So wonderful. All right, those are great. Um, okay, here's a question. Um, what are you currently binge watching or binge listening to? Maybe you're binge listening to something. I am actually not doing either of those things. I, <laughs> I, I literally have watched zero television wow. in, in months. Um, and I, I don't really get how to, I'm just too stupid to figure out how to do podcasts. So I'm not listening to or watching anything. I read, I read a lot of, uh, a lot of articles, a lot of essays, not so much with books. Um, but yeah, I'm not really listening or watching anything. Oh, so you're binge reading. That's okay. Does that make me the only person anybody knows who's not watching television? No, I'm asking because I'm always curious because I'm not binge watching anything either. And I'm always feeling like maybe, you know, there's something out there that I'm missing. So no, maybe I thought you'd have a great I mean, There's suggestion. definitely <laughs> stuff out there that I'm missing. I keep thinking, yeah, I really should be doing that. And just I keep on not getting yeah. it. I hear you. All right. Um, which historical figure do you identify with? Uh, Jonah. Jonah. Uh -huh. Definitely Jonah. Um, you know, so God calls Jonah to go do this thing, and he really doesn't want to do it. And so he goes running in the other direction, and he's just, he's tired. 
he's tired of everybody always asking him to do stuff. And it's sort of hard to say no to God, but he says no to God anyway. And I think Jonah is just bummed and tired of always being the guy that people ask to do things and to fix stuff that he knows really shouldn't need to be fixed if people hadn't screwed it up to begin with. Um, and and I, I really relate to that. I mean, eventually, of course, God throws him in the well and Jonah, you know, is really happy about that. He emerges and then he goes and he prophesies the way God tells him to and everybody repents. And, you know, he was really looking for a good smiting. And he's kind of <laughs> disappointed that people didn't get punished in the way that they deserve. I, I part company with Jonah there because I'm not a vindictive person. Um, but as someone who frequently finds myself regarding human behavior and thinking, huh, what could possibly go wrong? Um, I certainly can relate to that aspect of, of Jonah. Um, okay, so moving from the, <laughs> um, the more sober uh, um, to uh, the more uh, comical, what do you find funny? everything. I find people to be hilarious, um, often in ways that are frankly kind of wrong, but um, I find most things to be funny. Uh, years ago, a friend of mine who was a theater major when I was in college, she said the secret, uh, well, it was right after college, I just moved to New York, and she said the secret to living in New York, it's like reading Chekhov. You have to find the humor. Uh, and that was really good advice. That was really good advice. And if you can, you know, you look at these things that in so many ways are terrible, if you can find just a little bit of humor in them, it makes them possibly less terrible, but certainly more bearable. So I well, find those things funny. Yeah, well, that's sort of the, the, you know, in the spirit of being a collector, right? Just trying to collect sort of humor from, from, the, from the human, right? Yeah. And yeah, okay. All right, so what are you looking forward to doing post quarantine? Well, I, I, I could really use a haircut and a pedicure. Um, I, miss, I miss hugging people. And I'm, I'm really concerned that we're actually not gonna be able to do that even after quarantine, that we're really gonna have to be so careful and thoughtful about the ways in which we are physically intimate with our friends and even with strangers. Like, can we hug them? Probably not. Are we shaking hands anymore? Yeah, probably not. Um, but I'm, I'm, missing, I'm missing physical contact as a way of literally connecting with people. Smells too, you know, when you get like a, you know, people, you, you, there's a familiarity with the way people, you know, smell or, or, or their perfume that you always recognize or, or something that's, that's tough, right? Yeah. Because there's that I'm intimacy. Looking to, I'm looking forward to reconnecting with the, I mean, the virtual world is, is nice and I'm grateful for it, but I'm looking forward to a, a little bit more reality in, in my connections with people, a little more tactile. Um, realness. I missed that. Okay, so let's say um, that you're stuck on a boat somewhere in the middle of some island um, and uh, you have all of your essentials, um, but you've managed to remember to bring three items that you are so grateful that you brought with you on that boat. What are they? Huh. This is a new question. Told you I might surprise you. You've, you've been coming for every week. You didn't think I was going to bring up a new one? No, no, that's fair. So, I mean, I guess it's, that's kind of hard to answer because, you know, how do you define essentials? Um, like, you have all, right, that's true. That's a good point. Uh, you know, I mean, for me, there are certain books that... I think most people would consider like a happy extra that I would consider an essential. You know, if I'm not, if I don't have a, a you know, a prayer book and Psalms and, and scripture, then I, I feel like my, my stuff isn't complete. Um, 
you know, a good knife, also an essential. Um, oy, what are some things that I'm glad that I have other than essentials? I am the queen of being prepared. Anybody who's ever seen my satchel, which is usually quite heavy, um, has all kinds of stuff in it. But I am that person when someone says, hey, do you have insert whatever? Chances are yes. You know, I have an extra battery. I have an extra cord, different kinds. I usually have uh, you know, Tylenol. I, I always have snacks in my bag. Um, so I'm not sure what the essential thing is that I would have with me that I'm glad I have. Um, you know, I usually have bubbles and finger puppets and toys. In it's, like, my let's make, it's like, let's make a deal on the boat, right? A hundred percent. But things have a way of coming in useful and um, I find that I tend to be over-prepared for things like that and um, things tend to be useful because you have them and so you put them into use. So I guess I would be glad to be my usual prepared self um, and possibly to have and to have Barry with me because whatever I don't have in my bag, he 100% has in his. Yeah, um, so you, you've covered all, of, so you've exposed the flaw in the question. So well, I think I, mean, I, was a, I was a Girl Scout. So. Yeah, so I'm like, <laughs> darn it. Okay, I was hoping to get you. All right, okay. What is on your nightstand? Well, I don't technically have a nightstand. I have a bed whose frame has a, an area behind it which serves as a nightstand. There's a lamp. There's a, you know, a smart speaker. Um, weirdly, I have not yet put away my electric blanket and the thermostat thing, so that's on there, although I'm obviously not using it. And conveniently next to it is uh, the remote for the air conditioner, which I am using. Uh, there's some Vaseline, which is why my hands are not completely cracked and destroyed with all the hand washing. That was a real struggle back in March. Um, there are a couple of different books that I'm reading slowly. Um, Be Free or Die, which is a, a, a biography of Robert Smalls, who was the slave who stole a steamship and, and with it his freedom and the freedom of the 10 other people on board, including his wife and children. And then he became a Civil War hero for the North, obviously, and uh, eventually was elected to Congress during Reconstruction. Uh, also, the book about Henrietta Lacks and her involuntary contribution of her um, cells, which uh, began the line for uh, uh, curing uterine cancer. So I think that's pretty much it. It's your boat. Pretty generous space. Yeah. Sounds like your boat. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. What is your favorite artist or artwork or art movement? My favorite artist is usually, you know, kind of whoever I'm looking at at the moment or spending a lot of time with. But if I had to narrow it down a lot, I, I, I love the Impressionist movement because it's just so light and accessible and beautiful. Um, I also, Rembrandt makes me incredibly happy uh, for the light. Um, but uh, after traveling a couple of times to Italy and having the opportunity to see a lot of Caravaggio's in situ, um, he jumped way up to the top of the list. You know, seeing that stuff in a museum is one thing, but going to some random church that just happens to be down the way, um, and boom, there's a Caravaggio. It's, that's pretty special. And uh, he's, he's the only artist that I've been able to see that amount of work of in that way. So he has kind of an unfair advantage. Yep. One's eyesight as leading me to my career as well. Um, okay, dinner party. You've got three guests, dead, alive, real, fictional, 
who are they, and what are you serving? So I've actually thought about this question a lot because it shows up every time, and I had an instant response, and every week I keep thinking, like, is that still my answer? And yes. So if I had a dinner party, I would have uh, my mother, my son, and my daughter. I'm gonna try and get through this without crying. Uh, my mother died in 1986. She never met my children. I think she'd really like them. And I think they would really like her. Um, what are we eating? Probably stuffed cabbage, which was my grandmother, her mother's specialty. But my mother was a very good cook and she had strange tastes. So might be oxtails, might be, she made really good stewed oxtails. Um, definitely I would make her make baklava for dessert. Um, yeah, possibly also contributions that either or both of my children made because they too are very good cooks. But yeah, that's a dinner party that I I'm looking forward to at some point in the world to come. Glad we were able to ask that question tonight. Okay, so here's your last one. Okay. What is your motto or what are your words to live by? Uh, I think most of them come from Psalms. Um, give thanks to the Lord for he is good and his loving kindness endureth forever. Um, uh, this is the day the Lord has made, be grateful and rejoice on it, are probably two of my favorites. Um, my daughter actually made a beautiful uh, embroidery hoop of that latter piece of scripture. Um, I would say those are two solid phrases to live by. Maybe Hillel, if not now, when? Mm. I would agree, those are all beautiful. Thank you so much. Um, it, this was a wonderful evening, as it said from the top. Um, I knew we'd all be in for a real treat, um, uh, full of inspiration, um, humor, insight, um, and, and history. Um, so we thank you so much for being here tonight, and we thank all of you for being here to share uh, with us in this evening. Um, and before we um, close out, uh, I wanna turn the mic over to Martin, who has some few parting words and announcements for us. Um, Marty. Thank you, Nerea. Thank you, Liz. Thank you, everyone, for joining us this evening on Stay Home Open Studios. We appreciate you coming out and joining us every Thursday evening through July 30th at 7.30. Want to remind everybody that for artist opportunities, events, upcoming open studios, please see the Northern Manhattan Arts Alliance newsletter on our website, nomanyc.org. Michelle Orsi Gordon is gonna post on your Zoom and Facebook a three question survey. We'd ask everybody to please take a moment to give us your feedback on tonight's program. We would appreciate hearing from you. If you haven't done so, Now's a good time to submit your 2020 census, and uh, you can do that online. It takes just a few minutes at my2020census.gov. Some events we want to spotlight that are coming up in the next few days. This Saturday, June 27th at 2 p.m., Community League of the Heights Book Club with uh, Word Up and Sisters Uptown Bookstore and Northern Manhattan Arts Alliance will feature Wilhelmina Grant, our 2016 Uptown Art Stroll honoree, who launched Stay Home Open Studios with us back in April. She'll be the featured uh, author and we look forward to uh, her presentation during the book club this Saturday at 2 p.m. Uh, Monday, June 29th at 7 p.m. Please join Noma and uh, Patricia Miranda who will host a hands-on workshop for artists entitled Writing About Your Art Today, You Must RSVP and we ask you to do so at our website nomanyc.org. Also, please see our website for uh, information on two upcoming July sessions uh, of the Uptown Arts and Culture Summer Camps. This is a consortium of 15 Uptown Arts and Cultural Groups and uh, details on the two July sessions for our young people in the community are available. I understand they have over 200 applicants already, so uh, get in and get part of that program during one of those two sessions in July. The Jazz Power Initiative Summer Institutes will take place on July 7th and July 8th. Information about that is also available on our website and in our newsletter. And we invite you to join us next Thursday, July 2nd at 7.30 
for photographer Emmanuel Abreu's open studio sponsored by Chalk NYC on Broadway and West 212th Street. And for a look at Emmanuel Abreu's artwork, please see his website, eabreuvisuals.com. And finally, one week from tomorrow, drum roll please, debuting live exclusively on Disney Plus is Hamilton. So for your chance to see Hamilton, please uh, see Disney Plus. You can see our website, our newsletter. It will debut next Friday, July 3rd. Our thanks to all of you for joining us this evening, to Liz Ritter and to uh, all of you a good night. And we look forward to seeing you next Thursday at 7.30. Thank you, Martin. Um, and thanks to all of you again. Thanks to Inwood Pharmacy, New York City Department of Cultural Affairs, New York City Department of Small Business Services, Inwood Merchants Association, Uptown Collective, and Heights Sites. And Liz, thank you, thank you, thank you for this thank wonderful you. evening. Really um, good night, everyone. And we will see you all again next week, um, Thursday night, same time as always. Take care, everyone. Thanks. Good night. Good night. Good night.